Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we're going to have a lot of fun because we are doing a Bermuda dovetail. And this is just one of those fun ones that is very confusing to look at at first. But, um, well, let me just show you what it looks like. This way it's a little less confusing. It's basically a half blind dovetail meets a full, a half blind dovetail meets a through dovetail. So you have the look of a through dovetail um, on the one side and then the half blind on the other, um, pull those apart. So you can hear you can see where you have the half blind wall in here. And I think I'm out of focus. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go. Um, and, but there's this jagged piece that comes through. Now, if you do a Google search for Bermuda dovetails, um, they look a lot more pretty than that. Uh, I don't have a template to put on there, but I'm going to show you basically what you can do. And you can make this look anything you want, uh, but this little sawtooth pattern is what I came up with earlier. We're going to do something slightly different on the other side, though. Um, but before we, dump, before we dump into that, before we jump into that, I've got a couple announcements, uh, things coming up because the live videos here are where I can kind of say some of that. Um, and if you're new to live videos, uh, if you're watching this live, hey, how's it going? And welcome to the chat. My wife is on the, the chat and she can answer questions on there or save questions for me to ask, for me to answer. I'm having a fun time tonight. Um, and if you're much. watching this not live, you're watching it recorded, you can look down in the description and see all of the questions that have been asked and there's a timestamp beside that will take you close to where that time is in the video so that you can um, go through a little quicker. So if you see a question in there you really want to answer, you can jump to that spot in the video. Uh, so things coming up. Uh, I have several Midwest tool collectors meets that I'm going to be at. Um, number one, the Peach Meet down in Georgia. That is on the uh, 1st and 2nd of February. So that's coming up. What, a week from this weekend? Two weeks? Or, yeah, a week from this weekend. No. No, two, two weeks, weeks from this weekend. Two Something weeks. like that. It's coming up here soon. <laughs> so I'll be down yeah, for that. Yeah, because you a have a, like event. a marathon in between that. Oh, that's right. The marathon <laughs> is in, the marathon is a week from this weekend. And the weekend enough. after that, I'm down in Georgia. I've got a lot of things going on. Um, let's see. And then on the 24th, there is a tool meet in uh, St. Francis, um, Wisconsin. And I'll be up in that. It's just south of uh, Milwaukee. And then there's one here in Loves Park that I uh, co-host. And it's like a mile or so away from my house. And that will be on the uh, 14th of April. I hope so, they cover your expenses. Yeah, that's <laughs> going to be a crazy trip to get out to one of those. So if any of you come to any of those meets, I'd love to see you. Say hi. Um, and if you don't know what the Midwest Tool Collectors is, it is a, a group of people who collect tools, surprisingly. Um, and you can become a member of the club. Um, and in that case, then you can get invited to these meets. If you want to find out more, go to mwtca.org. Um, and they are really the best place to buy hand tools in the world, hands down. Um, phenomenal. And then on May 11th, I'm going to be at Makers Central in UK. And then the other one coming up, I just uh, booked this one, June. Uh, I'm going to be at the Midwest Tool Collectors National Meet. And I'm actually going to be doing a free session there. Uh, we're going to be talking about... Uh, um, something. I don't remember what. <laughs> that should be a fun class. Is that the one in Peoria? Yeah, that one's oh, in okay. Peoria, Illinois. So that one shouldn't be too much of a drive either. Uh, so let's dive into making these dovetails. So when you're actually looking at this, they they kind of become a little bit confusing as to how do they come apart and what do they go together until you see them about halfway apart. Let's wiggle this one out. And you see they're, they're basically at this point, they're a half-blind dovetail. And at this point, they're a, a full through dovetail. And so you make the tails as if they're a full through dovetail. And then you make the pins as if they're a half-blind dovetail. And then you take a little bit out of both to make them fit. And that's where the magic happens. So tonight, we're going to actually go through making this joint. So the first thing I want to do is make the tails, uh, because I am a tails first kind of guy. And here I get to play with my new overhead camera. Woohoo! I know, I'm having too much fun. Okay, that. now if you're gonna talk about tails, then you gotta do the ducktails. Woohoo! Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what era am I from? <laughs> uh, so, first thing I wanna do is lay this out, and I could get really fancy and lay them out with a jig and dividers and all of that, but I'm just gonna eyeball this, get them as close as I can. And you kinda of wanna make small pins for this because all of the sculpting is done on the tails. So I'm going to put these lines in here, somewhere around there, uh, making this pin about a quarter inch wide. Could probably make it a little bit thinner. Um, and if you look at some of the Bermuda dovetails, the, the traditional ones, they have tiny, tiny little pins. They're like a, a sixteenth of an inch line. 
And then the next thing I need to do is create a depth cut. Um, so how far down, how far down this board do I need to actually mark it? Let me zoom in a little bit for you here. And let's start talking about, oh, I could use a, really use a cameraman for this too. Um, so I want to set the depth and that is the thickness of the other board. So I can set this board over here, put the depth gauge on here, slide down to it, tighten it up. And that is the depth of the board. So I want to put that mark on here. And that's how deep I need to cut these. So then I can grab my dovetail saw, my fancy dancy bear cat dovetail saw. Fancy and dancy. make sure that I'm on the right side of the line and I'm cutting in. Basically, if I start on the outside, I want to have an arrow pointing down towards the bottom. And I'm going to stay on the outside of the line. <laughs> Start there. You notice I'm not drawing lines on here showing exactly the angle that I want. It's because I want an angle about that. And the angle really doesn't matter. Unless you really want to get technical and picky. The angle does not matter. Yeah. Any questions while I'm doing this? Mm -hmm. I think they're just watching. Cool. So I like to just freehand the dovetails. I like to see the natural flow of dovetail angles that aren't precisely the same, just don't that make, aren't lined up perfectly. Don't make the same mistake as earlier. What's that? Don't make the same mistake. Yes. <laughs> I'll show, when we get there, I'll show you what I did wrong. Give you a good learning experience. And no matter how many times I get there, I've done that same thing three or four times. Uh, but oh well. One of these days I'll learn. Then I do need to make a mark across here because we have to cut off this pin excess. Same thing, I'm just going to cut down here. I like to cut right on the line, or if anything, just a hair off of it, but close enough so that one smooth cut with the chisel will clean it up. Just like that. All right, I have a couple what questions when you get to Sure, point. what's that? So, Abrikun asks, are there any tools you're hoping to score at some of the meets or elsewhere? Um, I would actually, I'm looking at getting a few of the template framing tools. Um, I'd like to get a beam drill. Um, I would like to get a couple, uh, I'd like to get a good slick. I don't have a good slick. And so there are, there are a few of those that I would like to get because I would like to do some uh, timber framing here soon. I thought that might make a good video because I have a mailbox out front that needs a uh, post. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to get a whole new mailbox. <laughs> and I have the beams. I just haven't done the work yet. So that'll be coming up soon. Come in like this. Actually, that was right on the line. So I'm just going to clean out the schmoo at the bottom. There's that. Now we can clean out the space in between these two. Switch back over to this one. Are if you, you guys like this overhead, let me know because I finally got the, uh, the new GoPro so you don't see those lines top and bottom. I know, fancy dancy. It probably bothered me more than it bothered anyone else. But this one has a really wide lens so you can see everything. I don't know if I'd really like that, um, but you never know. Any other questions? Yes. I'm assuming jo Joe Wampler asks, where does the name come from? And I'm assuming he's where referring... Where does what? Where does the name come from? I'm assuming he's talking about the dovetail name. Bermuda dovetails? Um, I think it's just because they're sexy dovetails and anything Bermuda is sexy and so... I thought because there was triangles. Um, no. On, I actually don't know if they were like originated in Bermuda or if they were just called that because they're, they're cool dovetails. Uh, so here, just like any other dovetail, I'm going to chop in and then pair out and then chop in and pair out. And I'm staying away from the line. The wood that I'm working with here is called mahogany if you buy it at the big box store. I actually don't know what wood this is. Um, looks a lot like a sapili, but it is 
as soft as most pines. So now that I've paired in and I'm cut down about halfway, I'm going to go right into that marking gauge line and clean that out. Then flip it over and do the other side. Back this off a little bit for you. I have a question when you... Uh, yeah, what's that? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where did it just go? Oh, Grumpus asks how... Grumpus? In, Grumpus. I like the name. I know, I thought you would. Um, asks, how and why did you start woodwork by hand? Um, I became a stay-at-home dad. Well, before that, I sold all my power tools because we got a smaller house and a smaller house and a smaller house, and I basically had no tools left, and I had no space to do it. Well, when we moved into this house, I have a space in the basement that was uh, 10 foot by 11 foot, and I'm a stay-at-home dad, so I need something that's safe, quiet, and hand tools are dust-free, basically, are quiet, are safe for the kids to be around, can be done in a small space. Um, I could do them at night or when the kids were napping, as long as I wasn't pounding too much. And it was just a perfect fit. So I got to relearn my love of woodworking, which I've been doing all my life, and uh, put it into the hand tool world. So there are the tails. Just like that, I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup in here. And I'm going to undercut them just a hair. Sometimes I undercut, sometimes I don't. I think I undercut more than I don't. Make sure everything is nice and clean. And then I can check the bottom of it, make sure that it is square all the way across. Make sure that these are square, and that way I know I have a good reference surface there. Now the next thing is I need to put those tails onto the pen board while I drop it on the ground. <laughs> Wait, when did you get so old that you have to make those? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, let me move this over here a little bit, show you this angle. What I like to do is put it up against a block plane here, pinch it in there. That way, make sure the top of the block plane is precisely the same as the top of the board. Nice smooth feel there. Now we can slide this back and I can put it on here. Now, if we normally have, um, if we had half blind dovetails, um, I would back this off so that there would be that thickness of the reveal. But in this case, I actually want to draw those tails all the way across. So I'm going to line this up with those corners, make sure everything is exactly what it wants to be. And then I want to transfer the lines from these tails down to the pins board. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. And so now I have these lines on here. The next thing I need to do is make a mark for the depth of cut. And it should be the exact same. In this case, it is. I want to put that on the backboard here. I want to put it on the thin side of the tails. This is where I started went, went wrong earlier. And if you want to see what I'm talking about, I put a picture up on my Instagram page um, where I cut the tails backwards. Um, I made pyramids rather than tails, or uh, Norwegian tails, <laughs> and I just set the gauge down. So the next thing I need to do is actually create the half-blind shelf in here. So how thick do I want that to be? Usually, let me zoom in a little bit closer here, let you guys that feel. I normally want this to be about an eighth inch thick. The thicker that this shelf is in the back, and let me show you what I'm talking about here, is this plate here. The thicker it is, the stronger it is. But the thinner it is, the stronger the actual tails joint because this, the thinner You're this is. You're really zoomed in. Do you want to be that zoomed What's in? What's that? You're like really zoomed yeah, in. Yeah, I want to be right here where I'm pointing my fingers. Okay. Uh, so this is this thin. The If this is too thin, it becomes weak. But if it's too thick, then the tail that's in here is too small and is, is, is too weak. So I want to put that on there. I usually like about an eighth inch or so. I find that to be about, about right. No, nothing special. Just want to put the marking gauge on there, mark, hold it down, and then I'll put a mark across the top. Now, what I did last time is rather than putting the mark here, I turned it around and I put the mark here. And it doesn't work because you got to turn this board around to make the cuts. So I'm actually going to turn this board around in the joint. I want it to be up as high as I can so I can get the dovetail in there. And then 
I'm going to grab the dovetail saw here and put it whoop, up before I do that. Let me set this up so you can see what I'm talking about here. Is I forgot to make my down lines. I don't normally make uh, the down lines except for in these half lines. So I'll put my mark, my knife right into that line. Because I want these to be perfectly vertical so that they match up with the tails that I did earlier. Because I know those are perfectly at 90 degrees to the top. Any questions now? Yes, I have lots of questions now. Oh, really? <laughs> I was waiting for you to take a breath. First of all, I have feedback for the GoPro. Uh -huh. Most like it. Few are saying it gives them a little vertigo. Yeah, it's a bit wider of a lens than I was expecting. Yeah. So that would be their only suggestion is if you could tighten it up a little bit. Unfortunately, with the GoPro, I really can't. Although I might be able to do it. I, I might have it as a dedicated thing. And rather than having it as a separate lens, uh, putting it as a window up in the top corner, sort of like Sarah's in the bottom corner. So if you guys like that idea, let me know. Okay. But, but then I have questions. Are you ready for questions? I think I can do it. Okay. Well, before I do that, well, let me just explain what I'm doing. I'm on this camera still, yeah. So I'm just going to be coming at an angle, and I want to cut from this point down to this point at a corner. Sounds difficult, but once you've done it once or twice, it really isn't. It's just following a line. Okay, what you got? All right, so the first one, I think, is from Dwayne Rogers, and it is, what big box stores sell mahogany? What's that? What big box stores sell mahogany? Um, this actually came from Menards, but I've also seen it at Home Depot. Um, I think, no, Lowe's doesn't have it. Uh, they call it mahogany. It's not. I have no idea what it is. It is... It's, it reminds me of a, of a really, uh, I don't know, kind of like a Douglas fir softness. But yeah, that's it. Almost every Menards I've ever been at, and a lot of Home Depots have them. Um, now, before I go on, I'm going to show you my, my dovetail. It's not my dovetail trick. It's an old one. Uh, but... Because we cut at 45 degrees from this, top, from this top corner here to this corner here, we want to actually cut a, a corner all the way back in there. So we can stick a card scraper in here and just tap it vertically along the grain until we're down to depth, pull it out, slide it back a little farther. And we can do this all the way down until we have a nice tight cut corner. This is the secrets to your half-blind dovetails. Just makes it a lot easier for cleaning it out. You don't have to do this because you can do the work with a chisel, but this makes it easier. Questions? Yes. Um, Sam Wise asked, does anyone here know anything about a saw collector's meeting that's supposed to be happening near Hatfield, Pennsylvania this weekend? I do not know about it. Sounds like a fun one, though. There's a, quite a bit in Pennsylvania. There's actually a lot of hand tool stuff that happens in Pennsylvania. Several good auctions. Anything else? Um, Aubrey Kuhn asks, what are your overall favorite styles of furniture or furniture designer's work? Um, the mission style slash arts and crafts slash craftsman. I really like that. It is such a versatile thing that you can do so many different things with. Um, like the green and green takeoff on it. And that's actually what I think is going to be my next big furniture project is my uh, bedroom bed. I was dreaming about it last night. And I think I've come up with a design that I like. I just have to run it past my wife, so don't tell her yet. Um, <laughs> It might be better than just the mattresses on the floor. Yeah, his, <laughs> I'm hey, a woodworker, but my mattress and box spring are just on the floor, which is kind of like, yeah. Um. Although it's kind of nice not having to jump into bed being four foot. <laughs> but I want to do uh, I want to do a bed with uh, pull out storage underneath. So mm -hmm. cool. Um, now we need to remove that waste in between the pins. And with regular pins, it's easy because you can just you can just chop out between. But in this case, we have to make sure we don't go too far down. Uh, so I'm going to set this up with um, a block 
on here to protect it. Put a hold fast on, and then I can drop it down. Um, oh, I need to, I did this last time too, and I need to make sure that I do it right. I want to have this over far enough so that my chisel can slide in and not hit the bench. If this is back too far and the handle hits the bench, then I can't cut in. So I need to make sure that this is over by the edge of the bench enough so that I can cut all the way back in. One good tap, or a couple good taps. Uh, let me back this up a little bit. Uh, and there's a bunch of different ways to cut this out. And everyone you talk to is gonna have their own method of how they like it. Um, so experiment around, but I'm gonna show you the way that I like. I like to stay a little ways away from the line. And then chop in. Just a couple light taps. And then you can come in from the end grain and pop that out. And it was right about here earlier today I realized, wait a second, I'm cleaning out the wrong direction. I cut them wrong. And then rinse and repeat. Chop down, pair out, chop down, pair out. Questions? Rinse and repeat, says the man who has no hair. <laughs> I have hair. It's just different places. Anyways, um, there was a question. Oh, they wanted to know what chisels you were using. Uh, these are Aldi's chisels. Yeah, Aldi's is a grocery store. Uh, they sell them once a year. It used to be around Father's Day, but now it's like August. And they sell them for like one week a year. So you got to get there in time and get them. If you watch most of the hand tool blogs, they'll tell you when they go out there. Uh, they're not the best chisels in the world. Uh, but for $7, they are phenomenal chisels. And so that's why I use them as my go-to chisel. I have better chisels. I have ones that I like much better. But for video's sake and for quality of working, um, I, I highly recommend these. Um, if you're looking online, occasionally you'll find them. They're called uh, Work Zone Tools. That's the company that actually makes them and sells them to Aldi. So if you Google Work Zone Chisels, you might come up with them. And I've seen them a couple other places online. Uh, but not any place regular. So, yeah, I like my oldies chisel. Uh, now here we've gotten most of the way down, and I'm just a hair off of that marking gauge line. So I'm going to, I'm going to chop down a little bit more. Just one more. I don't want to blow through. Just a couple light taps. <coughs> and then I'm going to come in here and start paring out this way. And clean it out right down to that line. Questions? No, Ed was just asking if we had a hardwood floor, if it was carpeted, and I said carpeted. Yes, carpet in the bedroom. Oh, I hate hardwood floors in bedrooms. That's just uncomfortable. Get out of the bed in the morning, you want something squishy under your toes. <laughs> there you go, folks. <laughs> I know. I'm a woodworker, but I want carpet in my bedroom. We'd love to get our living room carpet in our bedroom. And then before I go any farther, I want to go right back to that marking gauge line and clean that all the way down. And I just eyeball the chisel being vertical. Questions? All these chisels are being left. What's that? Sorry. I... Let's see, Aubrey Kuhn just asks, bright finish or yellow zinc screws? I don't know what you're talking about. Clarify for us, Aubrey Kuhn. <laughs> different screws for different uses. Now, the problem with half-blind dovetails is you have those corners that are really hard to get back into. And for that, I have this chisel, um, commonly called a fishtail chisel. That's what Lee Nielsen calls them. Um, uh, also commonly called a dovetail chisel because they're the chisel you use when you're working on your dovetails. And it allows you to get back into those corners and clean things out all the way. This one's sharp enough to this end grain, so I can actually come down in and pair out all the way along there. Get rid of all that junk back in the corners. Just like that. So Aubrey Kuhn just is asking your preference. Okay, what were the two? Bright finish or yellow zinc? Neither. Brass. Brass. There you go. Well, I guess brass are the bright finish. But, um, I don't know. I don't know. It really doesn't matter to me. <laughs> uh, 
I'll go either way. I'm the guy who will put a zinc hex head bolt in my woodwork, so. Or, uh, yeah, not zinc. Um, grade 5. There. I think that's about it. So now we can test this and see, does this actually slide in? Oh, wait, no, it doesn't because oh, we made the tails long. And this is one of those, one of those fun things that uh, at this point, it's like we got confused when we're making the dovetails. And we made half blind and through dovetails all at the same time, um, but they don't work. So what do we have to do here? Either we could chop the tails off or we could chop out the webbing here. Or we could take out a little of both. And that's where the fun of the Bermuda tail comes in. So everything up to this point was kind of a prelude. Um, now what we want to do is actually come in and make a design on here. Now, if I were going to be making a whole dresser full of drawers, um, let me switch over to this camera for a minute. Uh, so if I were to be making a whole dresser full of drawers, I would want all the drawers to look the same. I'd have all the same tails and so I'd actually create a template that would have the tail spacing that I could put on all the drawers so they'd all be the same but then I would also create a template for whatever shape I want to have on here um, and I really suggest that you go and google Bermuda dovetails and see some of the designs and they're, they they really get uh, ornate uh, some of them with uh, with OGs and dead stops and uh, they, they look gorgeous um, but in this case, I'm just going to do something simple on here because I want to show you how to do it without a template. Because traditionally, you would create a template with that design, and then you would lay that template on top of here, and you would trace it out. And then you would lay your template on top of here, and you'd trace it out. And then you would carve out everything in between, and theoretically, they should fit together. Um, but in this case, I want to show you how to do it without a template so that, uh, you know, how exactly do they come together? <laughs> And for that, I'm going to be using my bird mouth. And this is a raised platform that you can put in a vise that makes it easier for using a coping saw or a scroll saw. Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, fret saw, there's the other word. And so I can do some detail work up on top of here. But let me raise up my camera so that you can see what I'm doing up here. Uh oh, it got stuck. One of these days I'm going to fix that. Well, that's just one of those other things that I'll say. One of these days I'm going to fix that. How many things around our house do I say that about, bud? What? How many things do I say that about? Say what about? I'm not paying attention. What? <laughs> no, what did you say? Any questions while I'm setting this up? Well, first of all, back up. What did you say? I'm I was joking. Oh, well, come on now. Um, any questions? Yes. Uh, where'd it go? There we go. Wayne Dixon asks, what kind of marking knife is that? Um... This is from um, Dan the Maker Man, and he actually now has started selling these. Uh, his current style is a little bit different, but this is my absolute favorite. It just, it, yeah, it is exactly what I want in a marking knife. So um, Dan the Maker Man, look him up on YouTube, and you'll see several others he has. He has some without, uh, this one has walnut, but he has some that have brass on them instead. Um, really gorgeous tools. Um, so... Switch back. Oh, have I been on this camera the whole time? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm trying to. Um, yeah, no, here's the, three button, the knife. What's the three button control behind? Oh, my pickle. Oh. Yes, I have a pickle hanging on the wall, and that is my control unit for nothing. So I'm going to do just create a random pattern here. And I'm just going to come in with some spikes, different shapes and sizes. And I could really get some fun in here, but I just want to have a little bit of my own type of fun, which is randomity. And so I'm just going to play around. I'm going to create two little sawtooth marks. And that way, and that way. And I'm kind of doing this to save some time and show you the basic idea of how you can get there. And so these are going to look pretty crummy, but they'll be fast. I thought about making a template ahead of time and showing that off, uh, but it's really just a piece of wood that's shaped the way you want these to be. Um, so, any questions while I'm working on this? Um, 
Okay, so Robert Tholen Thielen asks, I am making a wooden brace drill and I need to fill some holes and cracks. Should I use wood filler or five minute epoxy? Ah, uh, depends on what you want. Um, I like epoxy because you can shape it to be whatever you want. You can make it any, any color, any, anything. <laughs> um, I, I'm not a huge fan of wood filler. I, I haven't found a use for wood filler that I'm like, oh yes, this is exactly what I want. I just, it just, it always looks like it's a, it's something you're trying to hide, which is basically what you're doing with wood filler. So I try not to use wood filler. Um, I like epoxy. Um, so I, I guess it really just comes down to your taste. Um, do you want, do you like the look of wood filler or do you like the look of epoxy? Because in either case, you're going to see it. It's not something that disappears. No matter what the people tell you, it, they don't really disappear. Um, so I'm just cleaning these up so that they look a little bit better. I'll show you. Woo, you're up high. Why don't you get up high? Oh, that's right. I put you up high. Move the camera back down. Uh, zoom in. So while you're doing that, what kind of vice are you using? Uh, my right. tail vice here is actually a Veritas twin screw vice. And it is my favorite vice. I use it for everything. Um, a bit on the pricey side, but you get what you pay for. It is very functional, very nice. And uh, works as both an end, a face, a moxin, the whole nine yards. So I just want to clean these up a little bit. Get rid of any burrs. Make them a little prettier. Just like that. And now comes the fun. If I want to transfer those marks to this board. Now, how do I do that? Oh, no. Well, I mean, it really isn't that hard to do as long as you don't take off because I'm going to be taking off. If you look at it this way, I'm taking off everything but these points right here. So I can take off a ton of material um, to meet that. I just need to know how far in are those points. So I can set up the marking gauge here to the farthest bit of that point. Let's see, yeah, that one's a little farther. And so that's the farthest in that these go. I can lock that down and I can mark that on here. So I know now that everything behind that line goes, but there's gonna be some other in here. The first thing I want to do is actually create this shelf. So I'm going to take a saw and cut down to that shelf. And I need to know how far down is that shelf. Well, that shelf down, make sure I'm actually in camera here. This shelf, the distance from up here down to here, is the same as the thickness of the plate you have out here. So I can set my marking gauge up for that. That's why you can never have enough marking gauges. I usually have one for every measurement. But in this case, because I'm just doing one at a time, I can just keep changing it over. So I'm going to set to that thickness there. And I'll put that on the back. Right, and make sure I have this right. Yes. I'm going to put that on the back of these tails. And that's the thickness down that I need to cut. So now I can clamp this in here and cut it down. Oops, back the camera up a little bit. Sorry about that. Let me switch to this one. Three. Set this in here. I'm going to grab my carcass saw. And I'm going to come right in that line. I'm going to go down to that first marking gauge line I put on there. And this cut really doesn't matter that much because it's completely hidden. And if you go a little too far, then eh, it's not too much of a problem. Just have to be careful. Now we're cutting there. We can come back in here and we can chop out. Let's put this back on for you. Focus. Here we go. Back to two. And so I want to grab my chisel which is this one, and a mallet, and I can set into that line, and I can chop down. And so we've removed 
90% of the mass, just like that. And at this point, we should be able to take this and start sliding it on. And we can see it went on a little ways. So now we just have to keep working it back. So what I want to do is this point here needs to go all the way to the outside here. So I'm going to set a square on here, and I'm going to put a point on here. So everything along that line has to disappear. And then on this side, everything along that line needs to disappear. And then at these outside points, everything over here disappears. Everything over here disappears. Everything over here disappears. Everything over here disappears. So now I have everything on the outside of there, 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 and there disappears. And on this, there's actually going to be a point that comes down from there to there. And so I can actually transfer that point. It's going to be right here. And this point is going to be right here. And this point is going to be right here. And this point is going to be right here. So now I could basically, if those are straight, I can draw a line from here down to there, there, down to there. And I'm just drawing a general measurement here. And I'm, these lines are not deadly accurate. They're just close to approximations. But they're relatively close for the zigzag pattern. Just like that. Now we need to remove all that material. And for that, I'm actually going to bring in my dovetail chisel again. Use the corner to work in here. Pop out. Work in. Pop out. And I want to be very careful here because there is a very strong tendency or capability to bust out pieces here, especially if I decide to chop down to remove some waste. If I chop down too big a space, I could actually just split this whole tail in half. Like that one is actually a bit too big. I kind of ran a risk there. So I'll take out some more material here, more material there. And so I'm just going to keep going at this, and it's going to be a little while here. So are there any questions while I'm doing this? There are a couple. Okay. So Ramon Escalada asked, what were some of your first tools? Uh, my first tool ever was a Black & Decker cordless drill. It was the first tool I could call my own. I bought it at the Black & Decker outlet store. <laughs> um, that was when I was like seven. Um, my first hand tool was a plane, because uh, with a set of chisels, a plane, and a handsaw, you can build most anything. And it's actually rather impressive how much you can build with just those few tools. So you can see I'm starting to get that shape, just cutting in, chopping out, trying not to chop out too much, otherwise I cut down that tail. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> Uh, okay, there have been a couple questions. Okay. Um, I gotta go back. Uh, Justin Ford asked, what is a carcass saw for, and how does it differ from a tenon and a dovetail? Uh, a carcass saw is for cutting the carcass. of a Because you know, if you have your, your main box of the piece of furniture, that's called a carcass. Uh, it usually ha well, it has cross-cut teeth. It's a back saw. Uh, it's usually 14, 15, maybe 16 inches long, depending upon the genre you get yours from. Um, whereas a dovetail saw normally has ripping teeth. Um, sometimes it has a slight bit of fleam in it. And uh, uh, a dovetail saw is usually a lot smaller, usually is only about uh, two inches tall. Whereas a Tenon saw is usually a much higher saw uh, from the tooth to the plate, uh, to, to the back. 
that's usually like three, four, or five inches. It's a very tall saw. Um, so, and that's also usually a ripping saw, whereas a carcass saw is a crosscut tooth. And if you don't know the difference between a ripping saw and a crosscut saw, I actually have a video on that. Uh, it's a, a very common question for the new hand tool person. You see, I'm just getting in close to this. I'm not getting all the way down to the line here because I'm going to put that back in here and I should be getting very close. And I fit it in this time. So let's see how this goes in. And when this goes in, we can see where I have run amiss, where I have run amiss, where I have gone amiss, where I need to work a little bit more. And so my thickest point is here. And so I'm just going to be creating parallel lines from this board onto this board. And so I can see this one, this one's really good. I like that one. This one can get modified a little bit. And so I'm just going to sharpen these lines up a little bit. And on the next pass, I'm going to chop right into those lines. Mm, that one's over that way. So let's draw that one that way. That one that way. Questions? Yes. Uh, Grumpus asks, what is your favorite plane and chisel? Um, my favorite chisel is the one in my hand. My favorite plane is the Veritas Custom Plane. It is an extremely cool plane with all the bells and whistles. Uh, Veritas basically reinvented hand planes. They, they didn't follow the standard Bailey pattern. They decided to make something completely new, and they did a fantastic job of it. And I, I'm in love with it. Now, they're crazy expensive. Um, you've got to have money to, to get one of those. But uh, they're worth every penny and more. Um, they're, they're, they're not overpricing them, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. You get what you pay for. Um, chisel, it's usually some half-inch chisel. It's probably the most common thing in my hand, though. Wow, I made those in tight, didn't I? You ready for another question? Sure, yeah. Um, so S. Richie asks, so do the little triangle things have a structural purpose, or are they just aesthetic? Just for the fun of it. You know, Bermuda dovetails just look cool. They have no purpose at all. They just show off a skill and quality that you don't see elsewhere. So I'm just peering into those lines that I just created. And without a template, uh, like I'm doing here, you're never going to get a really crisp, hard, sharp line. You're always going to have some bit of fuzz between it. But usually when you clean them up with glue and plane, uh, you can get them looking pretty decent. Sometimes I'm going to come in here with a marking knife, or in this case a carving knife, and clean them out. I do use the marking knife because that is a good point for it. Try not to push so hard that I blow out the back side here. There's that one, and then this one. You're just bragging teeth. <laughs> what? Tyler Wood said they're just bragging teeth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, yes, there's a couple more. Cool. Um, so Darth Dweeb wants to know, what did you have first, a plane or a plane? Ah, uh, a plane plane. <laughs> <laughs> Half-finished plane. Um, yeah. Okay, now we're getting close. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm driving in here and I can see that this one's looking good. Except I need to take a little bit more off of this face. In this case, I'm actually going to take it off of the pins board. So 
So they want me to write an answer, and I forgot what your favorite plane was. The Veritas Custom Plane. Veritas Custom. You actually get to pick your handle. You get to pick your blade type. You get to pick, pick the front knob. You get to pick the bed angle. And so that's why it's custom, because you actually get to pick all of these various items. This one's going to end up being pretty crummy. I went too fast on it. All right, in your ch but. chisels, the half-inch dovetail. Just a half-inch chisel. Just a half-inch. Uh, where to put those? Okay, now I'm going to grab a couple files, and I'm going to clean up this down to those lines I just created. Use this one instead. Well, where did the mask come from? Ooh. Yeah, these aren't going to look very good. I'm rushing too much. Oh well. Usually, I do my best work when the shop is quiet and the music is loud and the kids aren't at home. Lives are a great place to watch me totally mess up. Let's see some really gappy dovetails. All right, let's see how this works. Move that out of the way. Slide this down. Yeah, that's pretty darn bad. <laughs> but yeah, see how poor that is? That's sad. Oh, yeah, I took off way too much material in there. So the nice thing about this is if it is too bad, you can cut your, move this over, switch back. You can um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, if they are too tight, uh, too bad, what you can do is with your, uh, your pins board here, you can actually cut this a little deeper and then go at it again, but then you're making your, shore, your drawer a little bit smaller. <laughs> um, so that's why traditionally they would have a pattern that they would follow. And so use that same pattern to mark on the tails board and the pins board. But then they look like something like that from either side. It's kind of an interesting shape that you don't get to see from other dovetails. So that is about it for those. What questions we have? We have no. several. All right. So maybe next time I'll actually show how to make the pattern for these because that takes quite a bit of time to make one that's specifically laid out for a specific set of dovetails because I don't have a specific set of dovetails to make it to. So maybe I'll do that next time. All right. What you got? You keep distracting me. Um, Ian Brick asked, how old you were when you got into woodworking? I was about five years old when I first started woodworking with my dad in the shop. Um, my first project was a Pinewood Derby car for Cub Scouts, which I actually just did with my kids this week. Uh, they went out and raced, and all three of them got first place in their division. All three of them going on to regionals. So, makes me happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I was going to show you this. I was originally, what I tried to do on the other side uh, was quickly make up a paper template. And you probably could do it with a paper template, but I didn't set this out quite right. Um, so what I ended up doing um, was I cut a shape on here, and then I could lay the shape on here, line it up in the right spot, and trace out what it would be. And then I can come over here to the tails. I can do the same thing up, line it up here, and trace out what it would be on there. And so provided that this template is stiff enough, I can get the exact same line on here that I would get on here. And theoretically, if you cut back to that line, then they fit together perfectly. And that's historically how they were done. Um, but the paper template worked okay, but I wouldn't want to do it for anything else. That's why I didn't want to use that tonight and just try to do it freehand. But then you do it freehand and you get that when you're rushing it. But oh well. Kind of gives you an idea of what they should be. But definitely go and look online for what they, you, what they traditionally look like. Um, they're... Not quite that junky. <laughs> cool. What else? All right. Um, hang on. 
Scratch card Shadrach asks, do you make custom furniture? Um, I make it for myself, yes. Um, I do not sell what I make. Uh, if I did, it would cost way too much, like the table that I just made. Um, if I were to make it with power tools, I could probably sell it for around 15000 But with hand tools, with the time I have into it, if I paid myself a measly $20 an hour, um, I, would end up, I would end up selling it for somewhere around twenty-five dollars to $30,000. Um, and no one really wants to pay that for a table. Um, so that's why I don't sell what I make. Um, if I were doing it with power tools, I probably would. And I have in the past. Um, I just don't do that now. Um, Sibariv asked, have you tested some wooden back dovetail saw instead of brass back? Yes. Um, and actually, that's one of the things that I want to make here soon is make a, uh, uh, I want to make a tenon saw with a wooden back. Um, they work fine. And they're a great way to make tools. You'll find a lot of, um, a lot of old uh, woodworkers used to make all their own tools. And pretty much other than the metal parts, you can make everything in the shop. And the metal parts you can usually buy relatively cheap. Um, and a wooden back feels exactly the same. It's a little bit lighter. Um, so if, you, if you're having too much time with the brass back being too heavy, um, it's about, it feels about the same as the polymer back on the Veritas saws. So yeah, it's a great tool. Okay, um, everybody's commenting now all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, everyone keeps commenting and I know I had other questions. Um, William Zangetti asked, have you ever seriously considered buying a table saw so to save time on milling lumber to spend that save time on another process? I have a table saw. Um, I rarely use it. Um, uh, the amount of time it takes me to get the, the, the wood up there, to use it, to cut it, bring it back down, I could just throw it on the, the saw bench and rip it down. Uh, it really doesn't take much time at all. It looks like it on the video because I show five 30 second clips where I'm at the beginning, end, and, and, and middle, and it's like, wow, that takes a lot of time because you don't see it much moving that, that three second clip. Um, but I mean, it really doesn't take that long to rip a board down. And if I'm just doing one or two boards, it, it's not worth taking it upstairs, setting up a table saw, running it. Uh, it's just, it's much faster to do it down here. Just rip it with a handsaw. Um, one of these days, I probably will set up a power tool shop and have a second channel that is all about doing the exact same project as power tools so I can show it both ways. Uh, I'd like to do that, but I, the table saw just isn't much fun, whereas a handsaw is a lot of fun. That's my personal opinion. Uh, all right, Justin Ford asks, what do you use to keep the rust off your tools? I actually just did a video on that recently, uh, rust prevention. Uh, if you Google wood by right rust prevention, you'll come across it. And I use paste wax and oil. Um, I usually use a linseed oil um, or a, uh, a light tool oil, like a three-in-one. Um, for most of the time with my saws and chisels, I have this wax that I've made. I have a video on making it. Um, it's beeswax and linseed oil, and I rub it on everything. I don't have a whole lot of problem with rust down here because I'm in an air-conditioned basement. Rust really isn't much of an issue, especially this time of year where there's no humidity at all. Um, Aubrey Kuhn has a suggestion, not a question. If you try to work EPA again, I tried bubble up on a wooden plane and it worked better. So a high 60 to 70 degree in, in, included, I think they meant inclined angle. Maybe build a high angle jack for your exotics. Um, I have a high angle jack. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the, well, the high angle will do better at preventing tear out. Um, it'll end up being a little bit harder to push through it though. Um, so six of one half dozen another. I, I think the, the more important thing is the, the mouth and chip breaker, but that's my personal preference. Some people really put a lot of stock in the angle of the iron. Um, I don't uh, do that as much. So. Let's see. Um, mm, there was one. Oh yeah. S Richie S. Is there a good way to turn a desk into a workbench by adding a bench top to it? Uh, you can as long as the top is sturdy because you're going to be doing a lot of horizontal movement on top of it. So it's got to be it's got to be strong, and that's why um, on the Rubo style there are big big legs. You're talking like six inch legs, uh, whereas on the English style, rather than having big legs, they have these tall skirts that connect to a large chunk of the leg. 
Um, they've got to be really stiff on that horizontal um, net. That's really the, the big thing. Uh, so either putting some cross bracing from leg to leg um, or mounting it up against the wall so that the wall gives you some support. Um, I don't like putting benches on walls, but everyone's a little bit different. So, yeah. Ooh, is that a uh, chat? Someone just turned something on. I heard I one know, click. That, shouldn't it be your lava lamp? Uh, no, they're all unplugged right now. Sorry, I didn't plug in the lights today. I'm sorry. So I'll have to do a dance. I He owes you, Justin. <laughs> oh, I still have the lights up here, but they're not even plugged in. I had unplugged everything because I was making a mess back here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've thought about making a rack over here with like. You got to do something lights. with your panic button thing because that's all that's been in the chat several times right. tonight. Yes, this is here. Let me show you. This is connected to nothing. Uh, this is a, uh, a relic from my past days. My master's is in uh, technical theater, so I did automation and things like that. And so this is a pickle from that that I, I purchased and done a few things with. Um, so yeah, I have this hanging there just for the fun of it. <laughs> did you use that for a uh, Christmas carol? Uh, yes, I did use this for the turntable. So I had forward, reverse, and emergency stop. No one died. And then uh, speed control. Um, Ed Radcliffe asks, are there pictures of the derby cars? And would we be, and would we be able to see pictures of the cars? I will actually, uh, I think it will be Thursday this week have a video coming out where I make them with the kids. Um, so you'll see that on my channel as well as my daughter's channel. My daughter has a channel, she is eight and has her own woodworking channel called Melody's Workbench. Uh, so you look that up and she'll have a video on there as well. So I, I think that will be Thursday, but I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay. It's coming up though. Darth Dweeb has another suggestion. Um, for a live on fixing mistakes or even a regular video. Um, t finds that those kind of tips would be helpful and valuable. I've thought about doing that. Uh, the problem is most of the time I don't like to fix the mistakes. Um, either I change the design and completely redo something or I show the mistake off. Um, I don't like hiding the mistakes. Um, and if I take you to any of the furniture around my house, you'll be able to look at things and be like, wow, there's a gap on that dovetail or there's a space over here. I like those things. They, they, they say they're real, they're, they're, they're a part of me. Um, so I don't like hiding those things as much. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what? I like it when they make me laugh at their comments. Sam Weiss said, hook the panic button up to an air raid horn and press it while doing the happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> I should have the horn. <laughs> Every time you say an answer I don't like. <laughs> Cool. Well, I think we're about to wrap this one up. Um, so this has been fun, other than the fact that was really kind of gappy. I'm not as happy with that one. So I'll have to take it apart and show you the other side. The other side is a lot better. Except this one's so tight. The dovetail itself was nice, but the uh, the other one. Let's see, here, this side looks even better. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you this side one more. So uh, yeah, maybe I'll, next time I'll do a template showing exactly how to do that. But I think it's almost time for another Q&A um, live. And for those of you who are new to the channel, uh, we do a live video every Thursday at, excuse me, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Um, usually, but it, it's pretty, pretty common that we do it on Tuesdays, 7 p.m. Central Time. Then Thursday, I have a video that comes out that's usually either a how-to video or a small build. And then Saturday is the bigger build of the week or the project that I'm currently working on the next step in that. So Saturday is usually the large video. So three videos every week and it's a lot of fun around here. So I'd love to hear your ideas, comments. Um, let me know in the comments below or send me an email. <laughs> I think that will uh, about do it for this week. Anything I'm forgetting? No? Cool. Mm -hmm. If we didn't get to your question, he'll probably answer it in the chat. Yep. Let me know and uh, feel free to send me a message on my website, webbywrite.com. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Good night. Hang Bye. on, I gotta find my button. Here's the button, Grace. We're looking for it. All right, there it is. Bye.